Hey, what's up, family? It's your man, Daryl II. Wanted to drop a word, but before I do, you already know. Let's bring God in this. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the encouragement that you've put in my spirit to share your word. And I pray that this message would touch the hearts and minds of those who hear it and that you would be brought the glory. And I pray that I would speak in the way you see fit and that you would just touch my tongue and guide me in the direction you want me to go. Have your way in this message in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, I think about that Michael Jackson song where it says, you are not alone. And, um, you know, it's an old school song. You know, he goes, you are not alone. I am here with you. And though we're far away, I am here to stay. Or say, I don't remember. It's been a while since I sang it, but I remember that first part. But I've got me um, earlier today. I was thinking about the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and how they were in the fiery furnace and how they were in a community of a lot of different communities where they were all forced to compromise or they were there was a, an edict given and they refused to adhere to what was expected of them because they wanted to honor God. And so they were thrown in the fiery furnace as a form of punishment. But while in that furnace, it was revealed to the king that they were not alone in that furnace and the ki that they were in there with an angel, perhaps the angel of the Lord, who was also Jesus. What we do know is God's provision was made available when they were going through that trial. And so I wanted to bring that to your attention, that if you're going through a trial, if you're going through perse persecution, if you're going through suffering, you are not alone. He's with you in the trial. The provision's available. And that even if you're facing hard times, now is not the time to give up hope. The Bible says faith is a substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not yet seen. And just know God's salvation is going to come in some way, shape or form, even if you don't see it yet, even if it appears to be bleak and dark. The Bible says weeping may endure for the night, but it is joy that comes in the morning. And so I want to encourage you to stay true to focusing on God. The Bible says whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's pure, whatever is worthy of praise, we are to think on these things. And so I want to encourage you to set your mind's attention on Jesus. And so I, I guess I can read some of the story. It's a little lengthy. I'm going to read it, but it's in Daniel chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar made a gold statue 90 feet tall and 90 and 9 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then he sent messages to the high officers, officials, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the provincial officials to come to the dedication of the statue he had set up. It's a big deal. So all these officials came and stood before the statue King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald shouted out, people of all races and nations and languages, listen to the king's command. When you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, bow to the ground to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's gold statue. Anyone who refuses to obey will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. So at the sound of the musical instruments, all the people, whatever their race or nation or language, bowed to the ground and worshipped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But some of the astrologers went to the king and informed him, informed on the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, long live the king. You issued a decree requiring all the people to bow down and worship the gold statue. When they hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and other musical instruments, that decree also states that those who refuse to obey must be thrown into a blazing furnace. There are some Jews, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, but there are some Jews whom you have put in charge of the province of Babylon. They pay no attention to you, your majesty. They refuse to serve your gods and do not worship the gold statue you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage and ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought before him. When they were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you refuse to serve my gods or to worship the gold statue I have set up? I will give you one more chance to bow down and worship the statue I have made when you hear the sound of the musical instruments. But if you refuse, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. And then what God will be able to rescue you from my power? Pretty arrogant, pretty bold words. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you. 
if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. He will rescue us from your power, your majesty. But even if he doesn't, we want to make it clear to you, your majesty, that we will never serve your gods or worship the gold statue you have set up. That's bold. Nebuchadnezzar was so furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face became distorted with rage. He commanded that the furnace be heated seven times hotter than usual. Then he ordered some of the strongest men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So they tied them up and threw them into the furnace, fully dressed in their pants, turbans, robes, and other garments. And because the king in his anger had demanded such a hot fire in the furnace, the flames killed the soldiers as they threw the three men in. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, securely tied, fell into the roaring flames. But suddenly, Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in amazement and exclaimed to his advisors, Didn't we tie up three men and throw them into the furnace? Yes, your majesty, we certainly did, they replied. It was a suddenly. Look, Nebuchadnezzar said, shouted, I see four men unbound walking around in the fire unharmed, and the fourth looks like a god. Then Nebuchadnezzar came as close as he could to the door of the flaming furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stepped out of the fire, then the high officers, officials, governors, and advisors crowded around them and saw that the fire had not touched them. Not a hair on their heads was singed and their clothing was not scorched. They didn't even smell a smoke. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel to rescue his servants who trusted in him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make this decree. If any people, whatever their race or nation or language, speak a word against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they will be torn limb from limb, and their houses will be turned into heaps of rubble. There is no other god who can rescue like this. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. Now, I read that to y'all, and there's a lot to take from that story. All I want to really focus on is a few things. One, God made it clear that they had to put some respect on his name. When he demonstrated his capabilities in the midst of trial, they saw firsthand that there was no God like him. Then also, they were trusting of God even when it looked bleak, and they made it clear that we trust God to save us, but even if he doesn't, we're going to stay true to what he has called us to do and put our faith in God. And then on top of that, um, to add insult to injury, he tied them up and threw them in the fire. But it was kind of like a rebirth because they were tied up. They went in the fire. They're, what they were tied up with was burned off. They were released from the fire. Didn't smell like fire. Didn't get burn marked or anything. Then they were promoted. They went through their suffering. Then an elevation came out on the other side. Your suffering is not in vain. And it was a witness to all the onlookers because all the other people there didn't know God, at least based on what we're seeing. God will put you in positions where you are the only witness sometimes, and he will allow you to suffer because he wants to showcase his glory through you. Don't deprive him of the opportunity of being blessed or being a blessing through you, but also elevating you because humility precedes honor. As you humble yourself before the Lord, Honor's going to come on the other side. Promotion's going to come. The Bible says promotion does not come from the east nor the west, but from God above. How do you know that the trouble you're in is not God's way of trying to elevate you? You better ask somebody. And so don't be caught up in trying to please people or fit in. This day and age, we have many people who are so afraid of, of persecution that they're willing to compromise who they are just so they can be liked. But the Bible says, woe unto the man if everybody speaks good manner of speech. And I say this from a place of humility, but boldness at the same time, because I'm not perfect, but my strength comes from God. If you're afraid, you go to God. The Bible says, perfect love cast out fear. And it says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid um, or di dismayed, but take up courage for the Lord thy God is with thee. Be bold and be strong. There's instructions. And the Bible says, if you humble yourself before the Lord, resist the devil, then he will flee. So understand that when you face these opp oppositions and challenges that are testing your faith, your strength comes from him. It's not in yourself because our strength will fail us. The Bible says, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So recognize you need relationship with him. And then understand that you're not alone in that trial. God will send an angel to protect you. So just know he's got your back. I think about that Fred Hammond song on his Purpose by Design album, that one song called Give Me a Clean Heart. There's a line in it where he goes, I am calling out to you for a strength exchange. I would gladly take your joy for my weakness. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the Bible also says, restore the joy of your salvation unto me. You might have been saved for a long time and have forgotten why it's such a blessing. We're going to pray that Lord restore the joy of your salvation unto you. But before I go, so I just wanted to drop that in your spirit. Whatever God reveals to you, that's between you and him. But if you want to read that word for yourself, Daniel chapter 3. And just know he says, don't fear the person who can hurt the body. Fear the one who can put the soul and body in hell. And that's, and that's God. So anyway, anybody watching? If you ain't got a personal relationship with God the Father, you're missing out. You think them flames was hot that they faced. If you don't know Jesus, the flames that you headed to are far worse. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to destruction. The Bible also says broad is the road that leads to salvation, but narrow is the way, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and narrow is the way that leads to salvation, and how few are those who find it. I want to help you find it. It's through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can get to the Father but by him. And so if you want to know him, understand there's moments of persecution like we read. There's moments of being disliked like we read. But it is a blessing because when the Bible says those who endure to the end shall be saved. God's got amazing plans for you. He's going to send you to heaven, but he's also going to give you a purpose while you're on this earth if you know him. Because your righteousness ain't going to get you in them gates. Our righteousness is like filthy rags. Jesus came to the earth and lived a perfect life, never sinned, but he took all our sins on himself. And because he was righteous and we place our faith in him, his righteousness becomes ours. He died on that cross, went to hell, came back, set the captives free, left gifts for the church. He came back in three days. And when we place our faith in him, we have eternal life because the spirit of God then comes into our heart, the Holy Spirit, and leads us into all truth. And we are sealed for the day of redemption because the Holy Spirit is the foretaste of glory. I said a lot. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and that whoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. If you would like to do that, then repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. Please come into my heart and be my Lord. Oh, and I believe you were brought back from the dead. Please come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I'm sorry, it's getting late. I need to get some sleep. If you did that, the Spirit of God is in you, and you meant that, of course, and your name is written in the book of life, and you are headed to heaven. There are angels celebrating because you've crossed over from death to life. Because if you don't know Jesus, when you die, you're going to hell. He don't want that. That's why he came to provide an opportunity for us to know him. He said, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So I just want to pray a blessing over you right now, and I'm going to get off. Lord, I pray you restore the joy of your salvation unto those who once knew you but that are struggling. I pray for encouragement. And I pray more and more people will be brought to your kingdom and that you would bless those who heard this and that the enemy will not steal the seed from their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Also, my new book is on Amazon, Random Thoughts of a Believer, Life Lessons for a Believer. My, you, you can just put my name in there, Daryl Alder II. It's a great book. It'll bless you. It definitely blessed me to write it. And, you know, to all glory, all the glory goes to God. He gave me what to say. And then I have another book from years ago called God and His Men, a, colon, a Spiritual Enrichment Plan. So when I get them books in, I'll be holding them up in camera. I'm going to leave you with this song that Fred Hammond sang. He goes, I am calling out to you for a strength exchange. I will gladly take your joy for my weakness. Give me a clean heart and I will serve nobody but you. All right, y'all. Daryl, the second on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. I'm out. Peace.